And um, we're going to move on to a fireside chat next, ladies and gentlemen. And um, this topic is positive psychology in teaching and how it can be used to create positive interaction and prevent bullying. So this is going to be another interesting chat. And I'd like to welcome back to the stage, Diego Nunes, a head teacher and partner, Limitless Minds International College. Round of applause, please, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, sorry for the delay. Um, uh, we were tasked, and I'm honored, uh, to lead this uh, fireside chat about positive psychology in teaching and how to use it in order to prevent bullying. Okay. Uh, I would like to uh, allow uh, Ms. Tina Thorner, which is a philanthropist, a coach, and an expert on student development, to join me here. And uh, I would also like to have Binu Siva, which is an academic and expert in technology and development, also in this far side of panel. And then we'll take it from there. Thank you. Okay. So uh, the format that we have chosen to prepare beforehand is we're going to give a little introduction of each of us. Uh, then we're going to begin working on the content of this topic, and then we'll leave a little bit of time uh, in order to finish, and we'll try to make it like focused, okay? So uh, as a little introduction, I'm a head teacher of an international school in Madrid. Uh, the basic uh, aspects that are a little bit different from anyone else is that uh, we have an amount of 60% of students that have special needs. So we, there is a huge amount of population with students that have autism or difficulty of learning, and it's quite unique in that sense. And we work with different types of spectrums. So we work with like professional athletes, we work with um, people that have been in hospitals, uh, usually students that uh, do not follow the traditional standards of education. And um, we also offer a huge amount of subjects in order for our students to be motivated. And uh, we try to do it in a quite innovative way. And the main point, just to let you know, is that uh, in, in our school, each student has a unique uh, program that is basically given by the computer, by an algorithm. No? And the idea is that each student has its own uh, development and, and program. So now I'm going to let Tina do her introduction. Tina. Thank you so much, Diego. Uh, yes, I was uh, born and raised in Sweden. I actually left Sweden when I was 16, and after that I've been a globetrotter, you can say. I've been traveling the world, I've lived in different countries, and of course, as a female, uh, my background is that I have competed in rally sport since the age of, uh, yeah, I don't remember how young I was, because in Sweden we drive, and uh, I have competed in the sport, and I was one of the or I was, together with my driver, the first world champion in rally sport. I come from this uh, environment, and of course, when you are starting to have success as a female and taking spaces out from the male-dominated motorsport area, it was a type of bullying, I would say. And uh, that led me into finding that it was really why should people, we work together in multicultural teams, and suddenly because of your sex, you are sort of put on the side. So I was investing in this, I have supported it. Throughout my years, I have learned that this is something that I want to change. And um, for the introduction here, that's how I came into this panel, because of it, I invested and I'm a an, uh, philanthrope and an entrepreneur and I have invested in an educational platform called Your Academy where we have used for students around the world to overcome and in a very early age connect with each other and that have actually is one of the topics why I'm here and I will let you know about some of the projects and how we did that later on after my presentation but so you know how I, and how I came to be on this panel. Um, so my background is actually developing tools to overcome, but most of all, work with the young students of today, connecting them and letting students help each other to develop more than anything else. 
Okay, so thank you, Tina. I, we're going to be happy to hear about your projects in a minute. Now, uh, Mr. Binu, would you like to do a little presentation? Yeah, thank you, Diago. This is uh, Binu Siva Singh SK, registrar of uh, JPR University. As an academician and uh, administrative officer, we as a team, we are uh, to build, to bridge the gap between the academic and the corporate world. We have signed more than uh, 60 to 70 MOUs in a year to, to, to overcome uh, the gap between the academic and the industry. Not only for students, for our faculty also, we have uh, continuous faculty development training and uh, we are particularly involved the faculty into research. Thank you. Okay, so I think we have a little introduction. Let's go into the topic. Okay, so uh, regarding bullying and regarding uh, positive psychology, which is a complex topic, uh, the first thing that I have basically prepared for you is a little bit of data, just one minute. But I think it's important because it's a, it's a really complex topic that affects all of us. So you basically go to the biggest source of data, official data, I mean, for example, UNESCO, 2020, 2022. You go online right now, you search Google. It basically tells you that 30, 30% of students, one out of three, is going to suffer bullying at a certain point in life, period. So that's the data. The data is one out of three students will suffer bullying. It's a huge percentage of the student population. Huge. That means in a class of 30 students, 10 students are going to have bullying. Like that. And I'm not telling you, UNESCO is telling you. Okay? Out of that data, you can distinguish three things that I think are relevant. First difference. Bullying is equal in percentage between females and males. So this idea of males have less bullying, females have more bullying, or the other way around, statistics up to now show that they are more or less similar. There are small discrepancies, but more or less similar. And there's a high percentage of students that have bullying across all countries, all nationalities, which means bullying is not a European problem, it's not an Asian problem, it's not a, an American problem, it is not across continents, and it's not regarding any factor. It is something that is related to the human being. So it's something that is common on all cases, okay? So the first thing we need to be clear about is that bullying is an international problem. It's an international problem that has happened to every one of us, and every head teacher every member of the community of education is going to likely have to tackle this situation as well. So once we get the international uh, content and the international idea going forward, now let's go into details on how we can do things and how we can solve things. So I would like to ask my colleague Tina a little bit about her experience in Sweden, in Sweden regarding bullying and especially regarding uh, platforms or ideas that could actually reduce bullying. Tina, please. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, as I said before, in Sweden, we know also for the figures, if I just cut it down to the Swedish numbers, the biggest challenge we have with bullying in Sweden is the racism problem. And that is on the first place. And for me, then, being a globetrotter, see myself as a world citizen, I wanted to overcome that early. I know that not all students can travel the world, and especially now with we have the environmental problems. For me, it was how can I overcome that? How can students work together earlier? Because what we have seen with the work that they have done around, we actually 2015, 15, uh, used the 17 global goals as the main core on the platform to connect around. And uh, one of the, of the exercises on the platform was actually, actually called the Abu Dhabi Desert Challenge. And that's why it's so nice to be here to receive this award here in the UAE. Uh, because that was the first big, big exchange we had between students. They learned about, of course, motorsports since I was competing, but at the same time about the culture, about the people. We interacted with them. We had people from here interacting. And what 
the outcome of this was, and what we have seen with all the different projects on the platform, it's not the, just the Abu Dhabi Desert Challenge where we connected competition and we connected the culture and we connected how we make friends within motorsport, that if it's a football team or ice hockey team or international rally team, we are multi-culture and we, don't, we promote each other, we teach each other to grow. We use the advantage of being different and we use technology. But first and foremost, we are humans. And uh, that then encouraged the students. And what I have seen later on when we have had the crisis where we have had refugees coming up to Scandinavia, the students that have worked with that, those projects, connecting with other students around the world, they were actually embracing the new young people coming to our schools, they did not care about it, they were supporting, they were helping each other. And using the platform, we actually interacted with students making their own material, using any languages, but students teaching, leading and interacting with each other. And on the panel before us, I actually heard that we have to coach and mentor the students. That's exactly what the teachers have done in Sweden with using this and, and other schools around the world, they are mentoring and coaching, but the students are the creator of the content. They are making gamified mm. projects around exchange in languages, in cultures. They are being curious about things. They are exploring things and they are challenging the pedagogues because, and that's, when I see that and I've seen the outcome and I have roses coming from the student into my garden in the morning and they are so thankful and appreciation. And suddenly we had no bullying whatsoever and they exchanged, that is my friends and we have heard here throughout the two days about friendships, how important that is. And sometimes I feel that we are looking into the future and it seems like all of us are becoming robots. But in the end, it's human beings with feelings that we have to lead, but include them very early. And if we can include them much earlier, I have not seen any project that have failed on our platform and outside the platform as well, where students have actually made friendships from around the world, understanding in an early age. So with that, um, yes. We have a good approach and we know it's challenging, but um, we have to never forget that we are human beings, that we work with feelings and we work out of our heart and again with passion. And students have that passion and we are grown up are not good enough to lead in that way. That's my yeah, and, knowledge. And I do totally agree, just to like comment on this, is that um, it is 100% true that when students create relationships and they get friendships, uh, racism and all other kinds of bullying go down. And the reason why is that they create connections. And it's not the same thing saying, hey, this guy I never met, look at him, blah, 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 than having him in your group and cooperating. Because that guy no longer is the outsider in the room. So things change, okay? And we're going to get back to the concept of inclusion and the concept of friendship as a way to prevent bullying. But I would like to ask uh, Mr. Binu here, because uh, actually Binu, in his job, he gets to select and uh, uh, see the new students going to university. Uh, how is uh, his perspective on how higher education and school education uh, should try to prevent bullying? Okay? Yep. Thank you, Diego. Uh, I will start with uh, school education. Uh, present school education system has several quality related deficiencies are there that is curriculum that does not meet the development of the children and lack of qualified and experienced teachers are very less and lack of standard methodologies are also discussed inside the classrooms which results creative and lack of creative and innovative skills. Finally, yes, of course, road learning arise. In, for that, to overcome that, I have uh, 
take it up into some different stages you know that is based on the age i have comprises into four stages and stage 1 that is from age group from 3 to 7 that is a five years of stage in that age group the children must learn play and activity based learning that is the stage 1 and stage 2 students continues their activity based learning and their playing the basic subjects like arts science and mathematics and finally development of languages and numerical skills are developed in this stage also they can they can learn by using their own mother tongue as well as whatever the language they can use they can and in stage 3 that is the age group from 11 to 13 in that stage the deep knowledge of about arts science and mathematics is encouraged including the practical exposure practical exposure is much important for them to rethink to create more innovation skill and here introduction of vocational courses also it's done in this stage which will eliminate the root learning and in stage 4 which age factor from 14 to 17 it's a very very important stage so here each year we have divided into two semesters in that two semesters a children must learn around 5 to 6 subjects which include a vocational subject as a compulsion as well as the elective subject why vocational subject because students can showcase their own talent to maybe the future they can be a entrepreneur x y or z right which result a children can improve their critical thinking ethical reasoning quantitative and logical reasoning as well as the communication skill diago i am very clear that if the students are encouraged in these kind of activities the students won't interfere with the word called bullying since they are totally engaged in different different interesting structure they won't come up with the word called bullying or any other unwanted things thank you okay so just to like summarize it a little bit uh, the idea that we're trying to give here is that bullying is a mixture and we'll I'll talk a little bit about this in the future uh, psychologically speaking it's a mixture of a lot of factors it's a really complex uh, concept and communication a uh, friendship a uh, mentoring um, platforms of sharing uh, having students engage in classrooms all of these things uh, reduce bullying significantly okay now i'm going to tell you something uh, which i think is also going to give you a perspective okay uh, within this room is one friend of mine we, when we prepared this uh, which is tina bagenhammer she basically is the head teacher of an international school in um, in sweden and she basically has a top school in relationship to a um, a high low levels of bullying and basically also has a huge program for professional athletes so um when we were preparing this uh, conference i was looking at countries in the list of unesco that are basically identified as as countries that do not have high percentages of bullying okay i come from spain it wasn't going really well so <laughs> The thing is I wanted to learn from people that were doing things in a different way, okay? As Tina is going to explain now, uh, in a different way of approach, no? And uh, when I was speaking with with her, she told me that um there's three things that basically a uh, trigger or it's supposed to tr to trigger uh, events of bullying, okay? And the three main reasons of bullying, which are obviously hugely controversial, uh, are racism and you know that racism can produce bullying in schools uh, disabilities so i think we talked about this any student has a learning difficulty is in a risk of suffering bullying automatically because they have this disability the bigger the disability the bigger the chance of suffering bullying in school that's why uh, as we have other head teachers as well in this conference uh, these students require a special safeguarding uh, protocols because they are more vulnerable than the traditional student and other factors like sexual orientation or wealth or other kinds of things can influence this this effect 
So uh, when I asked her for this, she basically said, uh, the moment you begin working with your students and you try to lower this effect from happening, from getting them to work in groups, in PBL or anything like this, and you try to beach that gap using students that are uh, from older ages with students with lower ages, uh, you get some kind of um, environment working. And the, the thing that I have noticed, and uh, at least in my school, and I can tell you directly is, uh, for example, in my school, although we have a lot of indifferent international um, uh, nationalities, it is different for me to create a group of students that have people from many races. Because although I have international students, I do not have enough st international students. So how do I get one student from each nationality so they feel represented? And this is really important. So uh, Tina has, a, a, and I'm going to uh, tell her to explain you, has a great way of breaching this kind of issue with nationalities and sharing. Okay, so Tina, let, let them know. Uh, yes, uh, when, we, when we started this, I told you about, uh, I said I will give you some storytelling, but we have had these uh, challenges as we, as we, and we have tried to overcome them. And we also spoke about positive psychiatry, but for me it's also to teach and be a role model as a leader, uh, to actually implement that, the, this passion and overcome the challenges. Because I think I, when we have, have uh, had the, the discussion with the young people, what actually gives you the courage to leave your comfort zone, to try new things. We know that every student is different, and Diego and, and Bino knows that as well. And how can we find ways for them? And we also started with the passion. We talk about f uh, positive psychiatry, but I would say positive mindset. And on the platform, we actually made the education built around each and one of the students' passion. If it was riding or ice hockey or building something or driving cars or whatever it was, the education was actually out of them. And I got challenged and they say, yeah, but Tina, you come from motorsport. What can you actually contribute? So they gave me a challenge in a school in Sweden. And we had 22% of dropouts. And uh, that, uh, that's actually when we talk about higher education. If they are dropouts from the, the ground level or their, their normal education, that's a big step then to take them into higher education. And we started that project and nobody really believed in it. And that's something again that we, I feel that grown-ups are not good enough to encourage the younger people to overcome the things that they don't believe it's possible. I have done it so many times by challenging the, the insights what people have had before. Uh, so I also want to encourage the students with that. And that's what we focused on. We actually focused on them becoming, overcoming and learning how they can actually grow within with a positive mindset to be more curious about things when they came into doubt, what can we help them with? And when they used their own digital tools and they were a part of creating it, and they could actually create small things that help them sharing that, yeah, challenge with other students. Other students came along and supported them and gave input from their own knowledge at their own age, at their own time in life. And that, I think, because we cannot talk to the kids about the future, because they are so much in the momentum of here and now with themselves, focused on themselves. And that's where they need to get the courage and the inspiration. And um, it's more trustworthy, what we have found out, when students in the same age with maybe more knowledge or a little bit older or younger, that they encourage and we lead them. So this positive mindset that we have been trying to engage on the platform through gamification and edutainment, making it fun, making it positive, making it stand out, helping them to to be seen as the one unique person they are. 
helping with digital tools, we can do that. And that is also something that we have felt with Tina Bogenhammer, who is here with me also, that that kind of, of um, pedagogic, I would say, using this mixture have helped us enormous. And also for girls where I come from, that have actually changed their direction. They have changed direction from wanting maybe to be something typical female professionals into becoming engineers or growing with new technology or challenging themselves. So we have had very, very positive uh, experiences in this area, but working from each and one of the students interacting in that way. Yeah, I, I totally agree. At the end of the day, I think that when students interact and they get out of their uh, comfort zone and they get together in a digital way or in a physical way, uh, the gaps that basically take them apart and favor bullying actually reduce a little bit, okay? Uh, at the end of the day, this, this kind of thing increases confidence in students and uh, I feel sometimes that um, universities and certain uh, academic structures are not flexible enough to, to cater to when students are in a special emotional situations, especially after bullying. And uh, my colleague Binu here is going to tell you an idea and, and a concept that might make it uh, more feasible for them uh, to work in this environment. Thank you, Diego. Yeah, of course, uh, after completing the school education, uh, we have a module for uh, higher education as well. That is a four-year multi-entry exit degree program. That is, if a student can enter into the first year, if they want to complete after the first year, they want to do any other work or job or whatever it may be, so they can get the certificate once he or she will complete the first year. And after that, after one year or two years, maybe if they want to do continue the course, what he or she is expected to do, they can again enter into the second year. After completing the second year, they'll get a diploma program. So they can learn their own their own interesting stuff into the into those four years of degree programs. And even similar way, if they complete the third year, they can even get the degree whatever uh, they are learning, they, they will get the degree while completing the third year. And again, the final year also it's same. If they complete the final year, they can come, they can anytime they can enter and anytime they can exit based on their own interest. We are giving complete open to the students, those they are, they are really interest, interest to take part the, their own uh, courses. If they complete the four years of degree, finally they will award it as a degree with research honor. So this, this, this mindset will bring the students that since they are, they are learning their own interest, they won't, they won't come out with some other stupid things. So they will keen on what they are learning, what they, are, they have to do, they will do. In that also again I'll conclude that they will stop such kind of stupid things like bullying X, Y and Z. Thank you. Okay, so, so to summarize it a little bit as well. Um, the idea basically here is that if you're flexible in your studies and if you're flexible in the way uh, you approach uh, students going in and out of education, depending on, on their life uh, situation, and I'm thinking about higher education, well, maybe they need to get a job, maybe they become uh, parents and they need to drop and they need to come back. Uh, the more flexible the education is, the more it will basically allow for students that have bullying to basically be within the structure, yes. Uh, uh, you can imagine there has been a huge increase in homeschooling. This is not something new, but I'm telling you right now, there's a big increase after COVID in homeschooling. And I can tell you this because I had a program for that as well. Um, and this is because the system is not adapting to certain students. The more the system doesn't adapt to students, the more students will drop school. And the more people will learn everything in YouTube. So unless we want to become YouTube, uh, we need to change, okay? And the final comment before I close up and we do questions. Um, I think we talked about uh, two important things and I'm going to summarize with a project as well. We talked about the importance of, a, of having relationships, which is important for students not to be bullied. 
we talked about the importance of breaching that gap in order to reduce uh, 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 racism and all these effects uh, as with tools, with, for example, uh, having flexible schedules in higher education in order to prevent this. Uh, I'm just going to add finally, and this is something that I also double checked in the American Journal of Psychology, okay? And also in the PFA that I did in Job Hawkins, like in a certificate, things like this, is that uh, at least in my school, uh, we started a program called help help someone help yourself and basically we have one week of um of classes that there's no school and we basically social engineer people to make friends it looks stupid i know but think about this if we can guarantee that any student every student of a school has a friend only one only one friend i can tell you that the effect of bullying will be reduced because what studies are basically proving right now is that the biggest consequences of bullying happen when there's a big group of students against one individual. But bullying between groups is not as harmful for a human being. So when in my school I have a group of five students fighting against another group of five students, yes, they do fight and they do whatever, but it never gets to the level of aggression or anything like this, because this is a human factor, psychological human factor. When there's five people against five people, there's always risk for everyone. So the situation generally de-escalates on its own. But when there's 30 against one, that's when you need to worry. So sometimes trying to find a friend is the way to prevent bullying. So friendships, connections, Flexibility, those things make difference. And they are extremely easy to place in practice through platforms, through structures of education, and through organization in order to improve the life of students. And bullying is really, really serious threat. Okay? So this is uh, finished. Any questions that you would like to ask the panel? Anyone want to question? No questions? Okay. So thank you, thank so, you much. so much. You have done a good job and thank you for listening to us. Thank you for listening. Thank you everyone. Thank you.